It has been quite some time since I have wanted to start my series on system design. It is just that I never felt ready that I have all the resources and I have talked about all of the things that you might encounter while studying this concept. But right now I feel that I have covered enough that I can begin to talk about system design in general. And whenever there is a concept that needs more detailing, I will create a video on it. So with this series, my target is that I want to present you system design in such a way that you are able to link it correctly to real life problems. Because I truly believe that if you are able to relate a problem with some real life examples, then it comes very naturally to you. And that has always been the goal of my channel to simplify the process and the concept in such a way that it sticks in your mind. You don't have to just mug up every concept. So that is exactly what I'm going to do before even getting into, okay, this is system design and these are all the terminology involved. I first want to get into where do you actually encounter system design and what are some real life scenarios where you can apply them. And that begins with the most basic step. Where does it come in your interview and why do you even need it? So I believe that will be a good starting point and all along the journey, we are going to learn together. So. Let's get started over there. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. First of all, when you talk about system design and where does it come in your interview process? Technically, whenever you are applying at an organization or no matter wherever you are working, I would broadly say that you are either in the beginner level or you are an intermediate or you are an expert. That means you have every knowledge or you are a subject matter expert. So for most of the scenarios, you are at the beginner level. That means you are dealing with basic data structures. You are dealing with basic algorithms and mostly problems on just to simplify arrays, strings, trees, all of that. Next comes the part when you are going at a senior level. So this is where I would say you are going at an intermediate level. And this is the point where you must have a knowledge of all the system design concepts. Because think about it such a large organization like any of the fan companies, you know that you cannot just develop applications based upon all of the data structures that you have studied, right? You will not be actually using an array and then making all of these huge applications, correct? You need a very good architecture level diagram and then you want to deploy out all the several components, correct? Now, when you are at a beginner level, it is not expected out of you that you make these design decisions. What usually happens is at the beginner level, you are just given a sub module that, Hey, this is an entire application and you have to solve this small bit. And that is why interviewers focus more on your data structures and problem solving abilities. When you are applying for intermediate roles, that is where you want to know that you have a knowledge of all of the design level concepts as well, because how is a system working? What is actually happening? What's the database? What is caching? How is the data flowing? What requirements do you want? So this is where you will start to get all of these questions. And for example, you're applying at Google. So Google explicitly asks you, Hey, do you want a system design coding round in your interview process or not? And for other companies like Amazon, they will add a system design round if you're applying to software engineering levels of two and above. So that is the idea. And when you get at an expert level, you are not asked about data structures, algorithms. No, that doesn't happen. What happens is then you have to talk about real life applications. How would you deal this bunch of customers? How would you deal with the high traffic? How would you scale the application all throughout? So I know that all of these are very high level terms and surely we will get into the details of all of it, but you must understand that where does system design come into play? And it is this particular level. So if you want to grow in your career and if you want to reach at an expert level, that is where you need to have this knowledge because although you have these three levels, but the pay grade, it increases exponentially as you move towards the expert level and everybody loves a good pay, correct? So that is why system design is very, very necessary. You want to know, right? How is Netflix working? How is YouTube working? How are you handling so many customers? Think about it. 
Netflix is available all throughout the world. And on YouTube, you can live stream a YouTube video even with millions of viewers. So how are you handling all of that traffic? That is all behind what system design is. How are you designing this entire application? So that is the end goal. But before that, we want to understand what the hell is even system design and why do you want to scale applications? Or rather, what does scaling even mean? I will start from the very basic and then we will go along building our way step by step. So where do you start? Well, why do you even need system design? And to understand it, let us go to the ground level. Forget everything about computers. Just focus that, let us say you want to open a bookstore, right? And what do you do? Okay, you have a small bookstore, you open it. What happens now? You can say that, okay, some customers will start to come in. Now, as more and more customers start to come in, what do you do? Your bookstore will start to get smaller, right? So you want to accommodate more customers. What is the first thing that comes to your mind? Okay, this is a small shop. What do I do? I will try to either expand my shop or what I'm going to do is I will shut down this store and maybe I open an even bigger store, correct? Now you have a bigger store. And what happens is you see more and more customers come in. Your store is able to accommodate everyone. So what are you basically doing? You are increasing your store capacity, correct? And this process cannot just go on. Think about it. What if more customers starts to come in? You have a lot of customers coming in, correct? So what do you do now? Okay, maybe I can increase my store once again. My bookstore is even bigger now and I can accommodate more people. But do you see the problem with this approach? What if more and more customers start to come in? What if you are becoming really, really popular? Do you think that you can keep on expanding your bookstore? You will face all of the issues, right? You cannot have a very huge building. You will have all these parking problems and all of the resources problems as well. You cannot manage all the customers. It will be all of a hassle, right? So basically what you are currently doing right now is you are scaling your bookstore vertically. That means you are gonna keep on increasing the size of your bookstore. You will soon realize that you are running out of space, correct? So you already know what solutions do all of these big companies come up with, right? And what is that? They do not open a store at only one place. What will you do? You will open different stores at different places, correct? And each of these stores, they are made on the basis of your consumption, correct? You do not want to open a huge store where the footfall is very less and vice versa. So basically, what are you doing? You are trying to expand your business horizontally. What you can do is you can use your same store format and open it up in a lot of different places. What did that do? With this, you can distribute all of your customer at different places, correct? Think about it. If you had your store open only in one region, then you're only targeting customers from this particular region. You cannot expect that someone will fly all the way to come at your store. But if you have opened your store at all of these different places, a customer can go to any of the store that is nearest to them. So this is how you're solving a problem. And this is horizontal scaling. So now you're understanding the two most important concepts, vertical scaling and horizontal scaling. You cannot expect to have vertical scaling infinitely, but with horizontal scaling, you have a lot more scope. So this was a pretty basic example when you were trying to open a bookstore and then you want to expand it. You want more profits, right? And when it comes to computer programming or making applications, what happens is, let us say you are developing an application, correct? And this application will be having a database it will have some disk usage and it will have some CPU as well. And now think about it. You made your application on a computer, correct? Very basic. Let us say you have your home computer and you made an application on it. Now let's say you want to make this application available to someone. You run your own server and then you deploy this application. So people will start coming in and they will want to use your application, correct? But if you notice, the more and more people will try to use your app, what will happen? You will need more disk, you will need more CPU, and you will need more database as well. So the same concept applies over here. 
yes you can increase your disk size and then you can even use a faster cpu right now you are having a 2.2 gigahertz cpu you can switch to a 3 gigahertz similarly for a disk you can have 2 tb of ram and then you can upgrade to 4 terabytes of ram similarly for database as well but do you see the problem if you have to deal with a millions of user think about facebook right you have so many users you cannot expect that you will keep on increasing your disk database and cpu quantity you are limited right you do not have a faster cpu than a particular limit correct another factor is that when you are dealing with such large memories then the cost of things also start to grow i'm pretty sure that when you have purchased components you might have seen this as well for example if you are taking two rams of four terabyte each they will cost you less than a single piece of eight terabyte ram so the price required is not linear so you cannot keep on increasing your ram continuously your cost will keep on increasing exponentially and you will never make a profit in fact if you look at the graph between your cost and memory this graph will look something like this so as you increase your memory the cost keeps on going up right and whenever you're dealing with applications you need more ram more and more fast memory so at that point your application stops scaling you cannot just accommodate more and more customers to reach you so this is exactly similar when you're opening a bookstore correct you cannot just keep on increasing your bookstore size you will face some of the problems and when you're dealing with computer applications you get limited by all of these resources to give you an example i just took two screenshots just look at this here is a solid state drive and for four terabytes the cost is approx 230 dollars so you would expect that okay for eight terabytes i will get the double of cost right but that is not true for high memories if you are increasing your storage size then the cost becomes greater than a multiple of two and that is why you cannot just keep on having a vertical scaling you need to think something different and that is where horizontal scaling comes in similar to the way we were opening all of our bookstores what we now do is we take up our app and we will try to deploy it in two different regions of the world so now what happens all of your customers that were coming from all the way to the world only in one region this was our condition right and this was causing a problem. What did we just do? We have now deployed our applications in two different regions. And now some customers can reach over here while the other users can reach over here. So what did you do? You partitioned your users, correct? And you are able to give them the same service. So this is a very high level overview design about what is a vertical scaling and what is a horizontal scaling. And this is the exact reason why you need to study system design. Because you cannot just keep on scaling up your application vertically. It is just not possible. You need to have different servers all throughout the world. That is why you have so many services in all different regions of the world. That is why there is a concept of latency. Because it depends which server are you trying to connect to. If a server is hosted only in the Americas, then this is the latency from all different countries. So these are all the concepts that we will become familiar with. But for this video, I just want to give you an overview that this is system design and that is why we study it. And I really hope that this kind of piques your interest and you want to know more. And this is how I'm gonna structure my course as well. So basically what we are gonna do is just like this real life example, we will cover all of the basics of system design. That means, what are all the terminology used? What is caching? What is latency? What is partitioning? What is hashing? What do all of these actually mean? And we will go step by step over every example. What is the individual component doing? And how can you take advantage of it? And once we are familiar with all of these basic concepts, we will start off with some very basic designs. For example, how do you implement a service that is a URL shortener? How do you implement a service? Something like Uber. So just a basic idea, like how do you have this map structure and how do you find the nearest cab? So these are some of the very basic designs 
and then we are going to understand each of the components as well. So what I want to just say is it is a journey and it will take some time. Just keep letting me know if you are facing any problems and which part do you want me to expand more. Just tell me if it gets very verbose or if it starts to get boring. But all of this feedback will help me to curate this course even more effectively. And I promise I will try to simplify it as much as possible for you. And if everything goes right, we will also look at some complex designs and some real life applications too. So that is all I had in my mind for now. So do let me know what are you feeling about this course and are you looking forward to it? That will surely keep me motivated. Also, if you find this channel helpful and you really like these kind of explanations, please do subscribe to my channel. It really keeps me going. And if you want more, consider joining my channel. By that, you do get priority reply to your comments and you do get early access to these new videos as well. So stay tuned for my upcoming videos. Until then, see ya.